the show. Welcome to Offstage Radio. This is going to be the first of a three-part series um, of the Gonzaga baseball players that were drafted. So our first guest of the three-part Gonzaga baseball draftee, I guess I'm going to call it series, Alec Jacob. He was the pitcher that threw the no-hitter. He was one of the best pitchers in the conference this year. Um, I'll, I can let you introduce yourself if you want, even. Or I'm just going to run down all the accolades I can think of. Unless you want me to do that for you, I could just go through go all for the it. Go for it. strikeouts, <laughs> um, beat LSU. That was I was an awesome watch. Um, through your no hitter this year, we kind of talked about that on the pre show. Mm-hmm. You were also in the top three or two, I think, in Gonzaga history in saves, along with being the, the best starter in last year. So, like, all these things coming together. Did you even know that? You're looking like, hey, that's not a bad I had one no to idea. Know. That's yeah, pretty cool, like, though. <laughs> you have all these different stats. Actually, I worked the broadcast, and I was getting the – before the season started, I was getting them ready. I knew I knew the, some of the guys. I ran some of the stats for Evan Wells. So I knew some of the guys, but I didn't know what everybody was. Like, I didn't know you were a starter at the time because I didn't know the team yet because I just got mm-hmm. here, too. So I was looking through the stats, and I saw you. I was like, oh, you must be the closer. And then when I saw you starting games, I'm like, well, this graphic means nothing now. He's not going to come in and close <laughs> the game out. So, But he was close. So, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. You were drafted by the San Diego Padres. How does that feel to be drafted? You're going to be starting a, a path to a major league career soon. It's, I mean, it's amazing, like you said, really. It's, uh, it's a dream come true, obviously. You know, it's something I've been working towards since I was, you know, three or four years old, just hitting the ball off the tee. And now, now we're here. It's, it's really crazy to think about, like, just how far, you know, you've come. And, I mean, like I said, I've, Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to play professional baseball and I finally get that opportunity. So I'm really excited. And obviously with a, a great uh, franchise that's up and coming, and they, uh, they really know how to develop their players. So I'm, uh, I'm really excited to get going. So let's go back a week really quick. What's your favorite baseball team? Because I think it's changed <laughs> last week. Yeah, yeah. I was prepared for it to change. But, I mean, I'm a Mariners fan as hard as it is to say that. And, uh it's hard to cheer them on. Obviously, I made the playoffs in over twenty years, so or twenty years, I guess, as of this this year. But yeah, twenty years exactly. Yeah, so it's it's <laughs> yeah tough to be a Mariners fan, and uh, I'm still rooting for them, I guess, except for when we're playing them. So Padres first now, Mariners second. That's that's a good order to have now. The team you're on. So well, but now the Padres. Maybe you don't want to say because you want you just got there. But say you're not on the Padres anymore. They're going to stay in your fandom, or it depends on where you go with them with your career. Uh, you know, even if even if I get like traded or something, I think they'd always hold like a you know a special place in my heart. They're the the team, team to draft me, the team to like officially make my dream come true. You know, and officially give me that chance of playing pro ball. And so. Um, you know, even if I do get traded, even if I never even play for them, I think they, they would always be, uh, you know, one of my favorite teams. And like I said, hold a special place in my heart just because they, they gave me the opportunity. So, yeah. I wish I had, I didn't even think about it. I wish I had it next to me. I have this amazing Ichiro bobblehead that I feel like you'd love to see. I'll have to get it when we're, maybe when we're after the show, it's him tipping the cap to the crowd. I got it. The oh, other that's day. great. I got it a week ago. My girlfriend and I went to Seattle and I went to the team shop and it was on clearance for 20 bucks. Oh, it's wow. amazing. I feel wow. like I have to get up and get it now. How is that on sale? You. It was on yeah, clearance, not even on sale. It was on clearance. All right. I will get up and get it right now so you can see this. Yeah. Okay. Everybody stay. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yes. Let me absolutely twist it around so you're not. There you go. Look at this. $20. What? 20 bucks? 20 bucks at the team oh, store right here. That's a steal. That's a great purchase right Absolute there. Absolute steal. I'm not a Mariners fan, not even close to a Mariners fan. You know, I like a team on the <laughs> other side of the country, but like yeah. could not pass this up. But yeah. I, I'm an avid sports fan. I also bought for 
I think it was the same thing, $20, a D Gordon signed baseball. So I just, wow, I mean, that's another steal right there. I think that's like. a steal too. Yeah. yeah. He was a great player. D Gordon was a great player. Now his name's D strange Gordon. And I'd never looked into why I don't know if that's, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know either. That's a good question. Is he still on the Mariners? I haven't heard anything he's, about him. He's not on. He's not on anybody. That's why nobody realizes oh. his name is not D. Strange Gordon because he's not on any team. He's just that makes sense. That makes just doing sense. his own thing now. But that makes sense. Let's let's get back to to the other side here. Um, you were telling me before that your girlfriend was really hoping that you'd be drafted to San Diego. So it. What a lot of people probably don't have is, and I mean, you're not going to be in San Diego to start, but you have like a little. You have an area there already that you can already go to if you need to go to San mm-hmm. Diego. How did, how did that feel knowing, like, this is kind of a team that was on the radar that you really wanted to go to? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I, uh, I'd i never been to San Diego before, and then I, uh, yeah, I started dating my girlfriend, Maddie, and I uh, went down there. I went down there, like, three times, I think, and, man, I just I fell in love with it. I mean, it's so beautiful, and I love the beach, and just great weather all the time. And so, yeah, it's it's – it's a great place to be. Obviously like San Diego was, uh, it's one of my favorite cities I've ever been to for sure. If not my favorite. And so, uh, like, like you said, I'm not going to start there, but, uh, it would be a really great place to play some professional baseball. I mean, to go, go, you know, win a ball game and go to the beach afterwards. You can't really complain about that. So, <laughs> and you know, it doesn't matter if it takes you a year or 10 years when you get there, Fernando Tatis Jr. will still be on that That's team. true. That's true. It doesn't true. matter how long it takes you to get there. He's still going to be there. I'll always have him by my back in the, in the six hole making plays. How's Hopefully that, making the throws, too. <laughs> now, now, I got another has that question. Now, I, I'm not a big fan of how does it feel, how does it feel, but I do got to ask one more. Say, say you make it in, in a couple years, right? Let's say a couple years down the road, you're now on the Padres. You're standing on the mound, and you have Fernando Tatis Jr., standing behind you playing shortstop now this guy is a joy to watch baseball i'm actually happy i moved to the west coast so i can watch this guy play baseball without falling mm-hmm. asleep in the fifth inning like, <laughs> Tenet, yeah. it's, it's amazing that's like, fair that's fair yeah. does it give you goosebumps thinking like i could be standing on the mound and fernando tatis jr is going to be there manny machado will be there like these guys that are legitimate superstars in the game of baseball yeah standing behind you as that is pretty crazy to think about when you you know you put it like that out of all i really hope i get a you know meet him at least and maybe in spring training or something but uh yeah it's actually funny you bring that up because after his rookie season i uh i watched some you know some games of his and you saw some highlights and i was uh i was i just i just was a big fan like right away just the energy he brings to the game and how much fun he has it's it's so much fun to watch like you said so i uh, i bought a jersey i bought a fernando tatis jersey <laughs> after his rookie season so i have a trout jersey and a tatis jersey and it just happened to work out that one of those two teams was the team that i got picked by so immediately first thing i get drafted go grab my tatis jersey wore that the rest of the day tried to get more padres gear but apparently they're all sold out everyone's hopping on the bandwagon well, you were just drafted Spokane, so you're just drafted by them they all bought out the gear I, <laughs> that's probably everyone beat me there i guess <laughs> they're <were> prepared <laughs> first of all now i'm not i've never been in the major leagues but i can tell you right now save your money because i'm pretty sure they're gonna hook you up with some gear when you get there <laughs> i'd have to imagine oh, yeah. you're gonna be getting yeah. some san diego i'd imagine so but i just really wanted a hat i didn't have a padres hat i wanted that but they didn't really have any so that's all right i can lids. i can wait not even at even the lids, at the lids online? they had one hat and it was like six and three quarters. And I'm like, nah, that's not going to work. Gonna so just sit up here on you. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, the, the Padres do have some of the, but I don't know if they still use all of them. They have some of the best Jersey combinations in baseball too. The, the Oh yeah. Digital yeah. I bought, it was a retro and... one that I bought actually. It was uh, like Navy and like orange lettering. And yeah, it was pretty, they, it was pretty cool. They have some of the, the best, the best stuff so for people like me that have never even sniffed a chance at being drafted what is the draft process like especially for a pitcher it was honestly it was really stressful like i had a i had an idea of like what to expect because i have a i have an agent and uh he helped me a lot uh basically told all the teams too that reached out to me like hey like i want you to like kind of go to him first 
on draft day and then he can get to, and then he can call me and we can go from there. Um, so that helped a lot. And I was, I mean, I was just sitting there watching the TV phone in hand, just, just waiting. And right when I got a call, it was instant like, Oh boy, I wonder who this is. And yeah, I, I got a, I got a call in the sixth round and, uh, did they just, they didn't give me quite the offer that I wanted. And, uh, it's obviously hard to say no to, uh, team drafting you and making your dream come true but at the same time i knew uh, i talked to my agent i knew what i wanted and kind of understood my worth a little bit and so i just i waited it out and uh that got the deal that i wanted so it was it was pretty stressful i'm not gonna lie I couldn't really sit still I was sweating just <laughs> sitting there watching pick after pick and so yeah i'm glad i uh i got the deal that i wanted but it was man i, I really was just stressed out just so anxious for since pretty much the fifth round on. I mean, it was, it's, yeah, I don't even know really how to explain it. I just, <laughs> my mom was just there, like just trying to calm me down. She would leave the room, try and give me my space at times. It was, it's, but now it's all over, you know, so I can kind of relax and stuff, but it was, it was a long, it was a long two days for me for sure. So you could, you could still hear like the angst in your voice, just talking about what it was like <laughs> to do the process. Yeah, I, gosh, I uh, I can't, I really can't even put it into words. I've never been more nervous in my life. Or I mean, like I knew I was going to get drafted. At least that's you know what my um, agent was telling me that I really wasn't uh, shouldn't worry too much. And there's a lot of teams on me, so that was nice to have that in my back pocket. You know, knowing that there was enough teams that were on me that I was going to get a chance, but at the same time, it's still just like anything can happen, you know, like anything can really happen. You can slip, you can fall out. And so it was once it got to like the 15th round and I was still waiting on a call. I was like, Ooh, man, like, <laughs> I was getting real nervous, but yeah, my advisor called me and goes, Hey, the Padres are taking you. Don't answer calls from anyone else. And so I had some other teams like talk to me right after he said that. And I was just like, Nope. Like, I, I can't wait. Like, I'm going to hear my name here in, you know, 10, 15 minutes. I just – so exciting. So, so, so and, and we do know in the sixth round you were called by somebody, and we do know it was at least 29 teams because I feel like if it was the Mariners, you might have been a little – it might have been a little different. But there's at least 29 teams. We don't have to get into what it was. But you say that they didn't have the offer you wanted. What do, what do you mean by that? Well, I um, – I had – set like uh they always ask that you know they call you before the draft and like hey what's your number like how much money i guess are you asking for and mm -hmm. stuff like that um and so i had a general idea of what i wanted and i, I didn't want to you know take 30 percent of that which was like some teams are offering and i was like you know that's just not really that's just not going to do it for me and i told them that i'm like you know i'm going to need more in fact the padres even called me on day two and we're like, Hey, you know, we got an offer for you. And I was like, no, that's, that's not going to work. Like, sorry, I'm going to need mm -hmm. some more. And then they luckily came back the next day with exactly what I wanted. And so that did it. Sealed the deal right there. That's, that's so, so interesting. I didn't realize that, that they kind of called and like, what are you looking for? So they can, they can figure out like, Oh, this person's probably not going to sign with us because we're not offering them enough or something like that before they even mm -hmm. draft. I, I really didn't know that. That's uh that's why I was like, yeah, offer. Yeah. It's all a business. Like they, uh, obviously, you know, early on, they're going to spend a lot of money and the high school kids are going to take a lot of money. And so uh, they got to try and save money somewhere. And so they're going to offer guys, you know, not a lot of money trying to, you know, make up for spending so much. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I got some good offers, but not just not just not quite what I wanted. And so I uh, I waited for it and I, I'm glad that I the Padres gave me what I wanted. It really it worked out in the end. So pretty happy with it. And we're going to wrap up soon. So what's the next step? What's the next what's what's next for you? The next step is I'm um, flying out on Sunday, going to Arizona, Peoria, spring training complex. I'm um, getting my physical uh, signing off on my contract getting some gear doing all that like officially becoming a part of the program which is going to be awesome and then they just kind of said you know it's a little different this year there's normally you know short season a ball starting mm -hmm. up and you know teams need 
teams need guys, but you know, all the, all the teams are going right now. So it's, it's yeah. all up in the air. Really don't really, they said they don't really know where I'm going to be going. Just probably hang out there, you know, maybe face some other guys that are in similar situation. And then just whenever spot opens up or whatever they, wherever they think I should go, I'll just head out. So I know the low A's in like LA area, Lake Elsinore, and then high is in Indiana. So I'm thinking if I'm going to be heading somewhere to one of those places. Wow. It's, that is are two completely different places. <laughs> Indiana. Yeah, two, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's too bad you know, you're like Definitely. I can either be right here or way out there. <laughs> or I don't the know country. which one yeah. yet though. Don't know which one yeah, it's gonna so be. True. Yeah. So Very you true. I think I remember this from working in minor league baseball. So say they do send you to Indiana and maybe they already told you about this. Do you you do um, I think it's host families, right? Did they talk to you about this yet, or you don't know yet? I I don't know if they're doing host families as much anymore with COVID. With COVID, yeah. Um, I think that might be like kind of pushing the host families out. They probably don't want you know some just random kid in their house that they don't know, don't really know what decisions he's going to be making, which is understandable. I feel like yeah. uh, I I know it, it depends on the team, but I know um, some of my former teammates on the Cardinals they're in that same division as that uh fort wayne team in indiana the padres mm-hmm. so and they're like i understand in like hotels or something so i don't know maybe i i'm really not sure I, you'll find out soon enough so, huh? yeah i'll find <laughs> out soon enough exactly yeah i remember i do remember when uh, i worked in minor league baseball for a little bit i remember like talking to some of the players and like 10 of them were staying at a host family. Like it was like a bunch of players at once were staying yeah. in one spot. And all I can think of was how many rooms do they have in this house? Cause I can't imagine <laughs> taking in these people and they're all bunking yeah. together. There's gotta be That's at least crazy. five rooms of yeah. two people, right? You gotta think. You'd think, yeah. A lot of rooms. That's a big house. I mean, you're a host family. I Speaking guess. of host families, I, uh, I think it was like maybe six or seven years ago, maybe eight years ago now. No, more than that. I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, but uh, Jerickson Profar, you know that yes. name, right, for the Padres. He, uh, he got drafted by who uh, was the Rangers at the time, I guess, played for the Spokane Indians. Mm-hmm. And um, he, his host mom, uh, like my parents knew, and so I got to meet him back when he was, you know, just, just starting to come up as like a big prospect. So that's another cool thing. I can maybe play with him too, which – meet him oh, again yeah. after it's been 10 years so that'd be awesome you're gonna be like hey you remember me yeah no. i yeah, was <laughs> remember me you know 15, probably 20 years ago remember that <laughs> or i was oh you, you yeah stayed probably, at my friend's uh, house he'd probably <laughs> you be like all right yeah no sorry man <laughs> but it depends it depends on what kind of guy he is if he's a really nice guy, like, oh that's yeah, true yeah yeah I that's true you. maybe he, maybe it's a good memory that would be awesome oh, no i'm really not saying cool. he's gonna actually remember you he's just gonna say he is so he doesn't hurt your feelings like yeah yeah man, uh, man. I remember yeah you, i stayed yeah i spokane indians yeah that was you yeah, yeah of course yeah. i remember you <laughs> yeah, yeah buddy maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a lot That'd of buddies and friends yeah buddy yeah friend i remember you yeah buddy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then you say your name like oh, oh i was man. about to say that i was oh, like yeah, tip yeah, of my tongue tip say, of the yeah. tongue <laughs> yeah tip of the tongue. <laughs> well thank you for joining us man. congratulations good luck we hope to stay in touch so we can follow you through your career and and help you help you get to the majors not in any way on the field but you know not really even helping but we could be there while you're doing it and say hey good job yeah <laughs> get your story out there but thank you man i really i really appreciate it thank you for having me on here yeah, of course. Uh, enjoy your time before you go out there, and good luck. We can't wait to see what Thank you do. You. We're going to come it. with part two next. Ernie Yake will be joining us. He was also drafted, so stay right there.